today? I'm amazing. How are you? I'm doing well. Let me make sure I got the volume up so I can hear you correctly. Awesome. Can you hear me? Okay, good. Mine is that too. Absolutely. So thank you so much for coming on the You Know Desi show. Of course. Um, I really appreciate you. Uh, I know you had a lot going on with work. And so I appreciate you being able to, you know what I'm saying, put the conference call on mute or whatever you got to do so you can join the show. So, for sure, for sure. You got it. Yeah. So <laughs> first off, uh, I love the work that you do. Um, you know, you're definitely international with it. You know what I'm saying? Thank you. So uh, I never know what coast you on. I never know what country you're in. So. Okay. I think you told me you was in Dallas right now, but for you know, the time being, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah we're for the time being. LA all over the place. So, kind of talk about it, what it is that you do. Uh, I know you do a lot, so yeah. So, from a from a corporate perspective, I'm actually in risk and IT risk. So, I've been a consultant for a long time, and I help companies going through uh, like policies and procedures. I do stuff to help essentially streamline their process from an efficiency standpoint. So that's what I do from a corporate standpoint. And then personally, of course, I am extremely passionate about helping people achieve their dreams. So I'm a speaker, an award-winning international speaker. I'm an author. I have traveled all over and, and spoke at crypto conferences, at leadership summits, women's conferences. Yeah. I host my own conferences. And um I hold people accountable. It's really important from a coaching perspective, not just in the uh, personal space when you're focused on a goal, but also from a corporate or even a fitness goal. I like to call myself your accountability coach, uh -huh. constantly helping people achieve and get to that, take action towards actually achieving the goals that they're setting for themselves. Yeah, that, that's really dope. So um, I, I definitely want to talk to you about the, the crypto uh, side of it. Yeah, I work for Coinbase and I also have a master's in project management. So I do a lot of project management stuff also. It's yeah. Kind of multifaceted. Yeah. So with everything that's going on right now, obviously that's affecting, you know, with the pandemic, it's affecting business, it's affecting currency, it's affecting the stock market, Forex, yeah. all of it. So yeah, yeah. Uh, we kind of see going on in that uh, realm. I mean, really, it's an opportunity, especially for people who are heavy into um, buying or purchasing stocks. If you have a lot in certain places, there's a lot of people who have lost. But for some, this is like a stock market dream because other people have been waiting for, you know, a crash or for things to go down so they can obviously buy low, sell high. Uh -huh. So it really just depends on your perspective. A lot of people have lost a lot of money. And then in some instances, some people are actually taking this time now to accumulate a lot of stock at a really low price. Yeah. Um, obviously crypto has fluctuated over the years. Initially it was something amazing. I worked for Coinbase, which is the number one trusted crypto exchange in the U S and you know, crypto was a big buzzword, but what happened is a lot of people got in too late. So they yeah. lost a lot of money because by the time you find out about it, it's usually yeah. already gone. Yeah. So that's what happened. So it put a bad taste in a lot of people's mouth because there were people accumulating um, or raising a lot of funds and then just kind of disappearing into the night. So mm -hmm. I think it is going to stabilize or it's slowly stabilizing mm -hmm. the blockchain technology. And I'm not an expert. I'm actually a crypto compliance analyst. Gotcha. Blockchain technology in itself has a lot of really strong factors that can help from a transparency standpoint. So I do believe it's something that is going to continuously um, be an emerging technology. Uh -huh. I think it's just a matter of people learning, you know, what and how to use it. Gotcha. And, and, that's, and that's why, and that's one thing that I, that I really love about you and I admire about you. Like most people see the surface, so they're only thinking one thing, but like, you really know what you're talking about. You really got other stuff going on. It just ain't, uh, you know, Instagram model or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, like, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. I love to learn. I'm very intrigued by intelligent conversations mm -hmm. and I like to surround myself and put myself in rooms where um, people bring me up and I'm learning from them. Um, they always say you never want to be the smartest person in the room. So yeah. right. it's definitely yeah. a motto that I live by. Yeah. And the same thing is saying that, um, you know, you're the average of your five best friends. So if, you know, if, if you're the smartest person and if your people around you ain't doing anything, then okay. you're not motivated that's why you know i like to see other things and travel and to see how other people live in and, yep. and everything like that because that's you know that's really really dope 
So, um, so back to uh, some of the things that you speak about. Mm -hmm. So travel, uh, I know you were in, where did I talk to you? Were you in Europe? Uh, I yeah, you... so I took about six months off and I decided to travel the world. I went to a lot of really incredible places. I went to Nigeria, Lagos and Abuja for about six weeks. And so it was great to be able to see I've been to Africa before. I'm originally from Sierra Leone, West Africa, but it was nice to I be in that part. <laughs> what? I was hoping you repped that West Africa. Yeah, always rest, rep in Salon. Um, and so it's amazing to be in that part of the world and to show people Nigeria. And I was able to do lives and show content that I that I actually took. And I have a content I need to put on my YouTube channel. And I, I always say I need to start a YouTube <laughs> a YouTube Instagram or not a YouTube, a travel Instagram. So people can see all the cool places. I have a ton of footage, but I did travel Africa, Joburg. Okay. I went to uh, the Gambia, Sierra Leone. I went to uh, various places in Europe. So I just kind of hopped around. I bought a bunch of one-way tickets. I yeah. had two big suitcases and I was just, you know, jet setting. Oh no, I saw you when you got back. I think that's what, it, that's when I saw yeah. you. I was there for, I was, for six months I was gone and I came home all of, I think 48 hours. Yeah. I would come home, unpack, wash my clothes, pack, and I'd leave again, so. Yeah, cause that's when uh, we were in LA one time, you were in the middle. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, I was literally like trying to load clothes in the washer. I think I had 24 hours to like yeah. unload and try to anticipate where I was going next and how I was going to pack. And that's the thing of like a, a nomad is where, where, what can I do to kind of mix and match things? And then where am I going to go so that I'm prepared from a weather standpoint? You know, X number of bikinis, you got a couple of your little black dresses, you have a coat, <laughs> couple pairs of jeans, you know, you get really creative uh -huh. when you start traveling the world. But, you know, uh, Barcelona, I went to, I just went all over. I literally just thought of places that I thought were amazing. I went to um, the Ryder Cup in France. So I went to Paris, which was yep. cool. I went by myself met a bunch of incredible people and throughout my journeys i've just really been able to connect with some incredible individuals who yeah. have um, kind of brought me into their world and like you said learned from a diversity and a cultural standpoint yeah so it just helps you see things different when you're all the way on the other side of the world and someone runs up to you in the airport and says you're my life coach Raylan. <laughs> and i was like oh okay so i guess it really kind of opened my eyes to just how far the message can reach yeah. Yeah. So you have to be open minded and make sure that you're not limited in that in that viewpoint because you never know who's watching you. Yeah. And, and talk about the importance of because I know you deal with uh, mental health and things at times. So talk about the importance of, you know, keeping your mind right in something like this, because a lot of people are losing jobs. A lot of people are getting furloughed. You know, um, we always want to jump to the next thing and jump to a new business or kind of bounce back. But sometimes you have to take a little personal time before you do that. So can you talk about that? Yeah, I think the pandemic was a, an incredible opportunity for everyone to really take a step back and push the reset button. Mm -hmm. It was a time for us to go within and really focus on ourselves. We're hectic and busy and lives happen and we're parents and we're, you know, trying to run a job and do a business and do all these things. And yeah. the pandemic really got, gave you the opportunity to like kind of be still in your spirituality yeah. and find times to do more simple things like walk outdoors. It's amazing <laughs> when you just say, I'm going outside, just go for a walk. Yeah. You know, you get so excited because you would have never thought about the, sim the simple pleasures of just outdoor and energy. So from a mindset, uh, mindset, I think a lot of people are actually um, not only in fear because the news doesn't help at all. It's telling you, all the cases, whether they're accurate or not, every day that number is increasing. And so it starts to really set into putting you into a fear mode. And mm -hmm. when you're fearful, you're obviously more susceptible to getting sick and to stress levels and all these other things. Yeah, I think um, it's important for people to stick to a daily routine. And that's something that I am excited that I created many years ago and for the most part have stuck to. I tweak it from time to time, but Essentially, it's just waking up and doing your prayer, finding ways to set some sort of intention for the day on what you'd like to accomplish personally or professionally. Okay. Making sure you're staying active. So if it's walking outside in the morning, I like evening walks because the sun isn't really heavy. It gives you yeah. a time to kind of like really just take it all in from a longer perspective. Yeah. Um, and then making sure that you're just constantly looking at those goals 
And even if it's just re-strategizing your goals, because a lot of us say 2020 is gone, the year, you know, throw 2020 in the trash. I correct people when they say that because no, 2020 is not gone. I think it's an incredible opportunity for you to really look at life in a new perspective. What can you do in this new time? Mm -hmm. What online business can you do? You know, how can you brush up on skills so that you can make yourself more marketable in the job market? Yeah, that's where you're, where you're at. It's, it's a perfect and incredible opportunity for you to really change your perspective on how you view quality time with family and friends. Absolutely. Yeah. And then more importantly, like you taking care of yourself and learning that you have to prepare yourself for the unknown and then also have to be very fluid and flexible and adapt to the new environment yeah. and the new circumstances. Yeah, it, it's definitely a, a great opportunity, as you said, whether it's to start an online business. Um, but it, it like if you were in the technology already, then this is nothing new. This is nothing that shouldn't yeah, have affected, you know, it was this just kind of sped things up. Like, obviously, um, like retail stores were going away anyway. Yeah. So most 100%. people are already kind of shopping online. So this yeah. sped up that process. Uh, the same with, you know, if you're talking about regular radio, this just sped up the process of going to podcast or yep. show like this. All traditional media is, you know, it's kind of gone anyway, or it's going away. So, yeah. you know, you just have to adapt and be, you know, comfortable with change. So many people aren't comfortable with change at all. And, you know, this was a forced thing, you know. Yeah, it really gave people... Um, it either forced you into doing the thing that you've been needing to do, starting that YouTube channel, starting that podcast. And it's incredible. I can, I commend the people that every single day, like yourself, I see you doing the interviews, starting the new shows, finding people, tapping into your resources. And people need to hear from various individuals on how they're dealing with this, people they look up to and learn new things on ways that they can adapt to this new norm because there's a good possibility it's going to be this way for a while. So it's kind of one of those things where it's like, be, be flexible, be open, be creative. Um, and just think about the possibilities and then change your perspective. Instead of saying I'm stuck in the house or I'm stuck in the house and I'm in the house board. <laughs> Sorry, couldn't help myself. <laughs> Instead of being stuck in the house, you could do TikTok, you know, obviously. Yeah. There's a lot of ways that people are getting creative and they're getting creative in ways that they never even knew. They're dancing, they're doing content, they're right. connecting with people, they're finding a way. They're, we're FaceTiming more, you know, instead of calling people, we FaceTime mm -hmm. now. Yeah. We're picking up the phone and having conversations. So I'm just, um, I'm always looking at the glass half full and I'm not perfect. I have rough days. When I have a rough day, I'm kind to myself. I, I really want to urge people. That's kind of the message I leave with people is like, be kind to yourself because uh -huh. we're so hard on ourselves. We're our harshest critics. And in this world, we see everyone glowing up on Instagram and TikTok. And we have to understand that we don't know what part of the story or the journey we walked in on and that they've already been through doing so much for five or 10 years prior to even meeting us. Like you've been in your industry for so long. No one knows how hard you've worked how yes. many events you've done that didn't fail. They only saw the ones that were successful. Right. How many interviews you've done, but in order to get that interview, how many doors you had to knock on. And yes. so they just see you in the highlight or the prime of what's going well for you. And they compare that to their current circumstances, not yes. realizing all your hard work. Yeah. And, and I always say everyone's race isn't your race, you know, uh, it's a marathon. So yeah. You know, uh, when you hear about artists that pop later on in their career, like a artist like Two Chains, you know, he yeah. was Luda the whole time that Luda was so big. And then when Luda kind of stepped away from music and started doing movies and everything else, then yeah. finally Two Chains, you know, years later, kind of blew up. But yep. uh, yeah, so I'm gonna get you out of here on this last one. I know you're definitely pressed for time. No so, worries. um. Please tell people if they want to, you know, uh, reach out to you for your services, for your book. Kind of shout that out before I get you out of here. 
Yeah, so I actually have a link in my bio, and my link will take you to my YouTube channel, my email list. It'll also allow you to, yeah, if you go to my page, Layland, I'm Layland. My name's pretty unique, so it's not, I'm not really hard to find, which is a gift and a curse. Yeah. Um, and then I also have um, links to my website, and I recently uh, joined uh, Total Life Changes, so I'm doing a lot of stuff in the health and wellness industry. So obviously, a lot of people have heard it's kind of something that's buzzing right now. Check out just the you just the link and it'll basically take you to all the different aspects of where you can contact me and then in the morning i do my morning message i do a little video that i post on my story or my or my wall so you can get your little motivation to kind of start your day off right as we speak in that you better get to youtube popping yeah yeah that's actually we speaking it into existence that's where my energy is shifting because if I show you all the content in my phone, you'd be like, oh, my God, why are you not posting this? But yeah. that's going to be my new weekend projects. Yeah. So yeah. thank you so much for having me. It's so incredible what you're doing and wishing you much continued success. You're getting people, you know, outside of their comfort zones and then yeah. you're sharing the knowledge with the resources that you have. So man, I appreciate you so much and I'll be in touch with you soon. I'll hit you up later on. Thank right. you. You're welcome. See you later. Have a nice day. You too, sweetie.